Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET New Corporation. In this brief video, we're going to talk to you about customizing a file known as the app offline file. What this actually does is it can be used to disable a .NET Nuke website. Now, there's a couple of reasons you might disable a .NET Nuke website. It's a very common practice if you're performing an upgrade or if you want to bring your website down for a short period of time, or if you're doing any testing that you might need to turn the website on or off. Now what we'll, we'll do is we'll show you how you can go in and create the app offline file, where you need to create that, and then we'll show you how you can customize that file to display the message or a message to your users of the, of the website. And then from there, we'll show you how you can turn the app offline file off and ultimately enable .NET Nuke. So the app offline file is a file that you can place into the root of any .NET Nuke website or any ASP.NET website running on version ASP.NET 2.0 or greater. Now this will turn off a website. So if we go over here to a .NET Nuke version 5.6.2 website, it's currently running here in Windows or in Microsoft's web matrix. So the website's up and running right now, but if we wanted to perform an upgrade or to do something else, we can disable that website. So I'm going to go to the root of the website on my file system. Now you need to get to the website's file system in order to make these types of changes. Now here inside of the root of the website, we're going to come in and we're going to create a new file. And I'm going to choose a new option and I'm going to choose new text document, but I'm going to rename it. I don't want it to be a .text file. What I'm going to do is create a file called app underscore offline.htm. Now it's very important with the name and the extension of the file. If we go ahead and name it appoffline.htm, that's going to ultimately disable our .NET Nuke website. So if we go back over to .NET Nuke and we do a refresh of the, of the web browser, you can see once the refresh is done, we ultimately get a blank page. Now that's because our app offline file is currently empty. So we can customize that app offline file. So if I switch back over here to the file system, I can go into the app offline file and make changes to it. Now typically you're going to make changes with just standard HTML inside of this file. So I'm, I can come through and customize the HTML. Now I'm going to pause the video as I go through and create some custom HTML here. So here I've gone in and I've just typed in some very basic HTML created the HTML tag, the head tag, and then a title tag with a title of website offline, and then an H1 tag inside of our body that says this website is currently offline within a paragraph tag of we are currently performing maintenance on our website, please check back later. Now if I go ahead and save this file and I go back to my website and I perform a refresh, we get that information displayed. So you can see the title, in the tab title there is website offline. The H1 tag is being displayed and then the contents of the paragraph tag are also being displayed. Now in some versions of some web browsers, if that file is less than one kilobyte in size, uh, IIS will actually respond with a 404 page. So sometimes you need to make things larger uh, and oftentimes I'll just copy the message, that paragraph tag, multiple times within the HTML. Now running on IIS Express here in Web Matrix, it, that's not an issue. So the, the page loads as normal. Now this particular website had a page called articles.aspx. And if I go ahead and type in articles.aspx into the URL, what you're going to see is anytime someone requests an ASPX or an ASP.NET page within .NET Nuke, that app offline file is going to be loaded. So it effectively disables all of the ASP.NET requests for your website. And you can go through and then perform the upgrade for your website. And when you have extracted all of the upgrade files, as we've done in a previous video, we would then want to disable the app offline file. We want to bring the website back online. So the way to do that is to go back into our file system and we can either delete that file, but in most cases what I'll do is I'll simply rename that file. So I would typically come in and rename that file to .htm.save or .htm.something else rather than .htm. That changing the name tells IIS to ignore the file. And if we go back to the browser again, refresh the page, it's now going to load .NET Nuke and it's going to load articles.aspx. And if we were to go to the home page, it would load the home page. So you can go through and customize the app offline with any HTML you would like to include. You can put in custom style sheets. You can put in 
a logo or other graphics into the into the file if you'd like or maybe a, a message of when the website will be back online but it's a very basic introduction into the app offline file I'd encourage you to check out our .NET Nuke training training page under the resources tab on .NET Nuke.com for more information about our training program as well as a variety of free videos again this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation thanks for watching the video